I guess. Prevention class. Back to broken windows theory. So we started off discussing broken windows theory and then a couple of related theories like code of the street, which really was not around in the 80s and the 90s. <laughs> but it helps us to understand the environment of the 80s and 90s. We take that idea, the code of the street. We looked at CompStat, right? Then we looked at the history of policing in, in New York City in particular, because it hasn't been around forever. We've had like night watchmen, security guards, forever since the beginning of time probably, but it wasn't until 1844 that policing actually started taking a professional, a professional official characteristic. I don't know if you were able to hear me quite so clearly before moving this mic closer to me. I apologize for that. But um, after watching the movie Gangs of New York, you got to see the environment where policing started, where there's gangs and corruption and, uh, well, yeah, that was the environment for how police in, the, in uh, not the United States, but in New York City was born. And pretty much for the country as well. The United States' biggest city, of course, was New York City. At the time, 320,000 people in the mid 1800s, but now well over 10, 15, 20 million people, depending on the area that you're looking at, to include into the definition of New York City. Well, it was in this environment with periodic periods of corruption and internal affairs investigations and cleaning up the police department, starting with Teddy Roosevelt way back in 1895 and 1896, but continuing on periodically until the 1970s when the Knapp Commission started uh, identifying grass eaters and meat eaters in police corruption. Remember those terms for the exam coming up. Until um, cr crime and shootings and murders reached their all-time high by the end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s, started going down a little bit under uh, Mayor Dinkins, but really dropped to low levels when Mayor Rudy Giuliani came to power with his uh, fabulous commissioners to help him implement the idea of broken windows theory and using CompStat as one of the tools. Well. We looked at the history of policing through the 19th century and the 20th century, and we brought it back up to date. Now we're at the place where we began, where we're now talking again about broken windows theory. We talked about the general theory before. Now we're going to start talking about specific strategies associated with broken windows theory. And those specific strategies, we'll get them from well, some of the documents produced by the New York Police Department itself and published through uh, the website of John Jay College, right? Kind of the pre uh, premier or preeminent uh, criminology, uh, criminal justice college in America, right? City University of New York, I think they're associated. Um, and since they're in the City University of New York, that's about as close as you can get to the New York Police Department, so they have a bird's eye view of what's going on. In any case, between being the premier or the, the best criminal justice college in the United States, probably the world, and the fact that they were right there in New York, and so they've been able to see and analyze through the, the years, not all the years, they don't go back to the 19th century, but since They've uh, been there in, into the 20th century. Um, we get a pretty good picture of what's going on. So John Jay is a pretty good source. So I've given you links to the website that I want you to make reference to for the second half of this class, the second semester, or second half of this semester. Let's see if I've got that listed here. Oh, I don't have that listed here. It's on my iPad, and my iPad is at my school office, and so I'll send you those links when I get back to the office. 
Mostly, I want you to do some reading, and I want you to read something that um, was uh, an Inspector General report that was very critical of broken windows in um, um, New York Police Department. We're not going to look at the report itself. We're going to look at the response of the New York Police Department, the response that they had to that report, which is very fascinating. It shows that, among other things, Broken Windows policing and Comstat continued in New York, not just through Mayor Rudy G., right, starting in 1993 and then going through 2001, but it continued all, all the way up until maybe uh, 2015 and 16. I can't remember the cutoff date when new mayor came to town, new guns, and new ideas, and kinder and gentler, right? where he decided we're not going to make people's lives miserable. We're going to let criminals be criminals, right? Be nice to criminals. <laughs> Which gets us right up to our present really, really incredibly stupid uh, mayor in New York, uh, de Blasio, Bill de Blasio. It used to be Wilhelm de Blasio, but he changed his name legally to Bill or William. Yeah, William de Blasio. In any case, William de Blasio is an idiot. He's very, very stupid in the way he's handling New York. And policing, he actually took away a billion, that's a trillion won in funding for the New York Police Department. So he's going to cut back the number of people that are uh, police officers and the number of services that they can provide to the city. Thinking that that's going to make the rioters and the demonstrators and the criminals happy. Well, it is going to make them happy because they can do more crimes without getting caught. <laughs> it's not going to make them more peaceful. It's going to make them more criminal. In any case, we're already seeing that happen in New York. But until he came around to screw things up in New York, New York was getting better for a period of, well, more than, more than a quarter century, more than 25 years. Yeah, pretty incredible. So I want you to read that response of the police department, uh, and I'll highlight that, that link for you to identify when I post that link on CTL. Read that report. Get to know something about the criticisms of, of um, the New York Police Department. I also am going to upload, uh, or I also am going to post a link to an NPR criticism of broken windows theory in New York, right? They talk about a good history of police, uh, of broken windows theory and how it was implemented in New York. They also talk about the decline in crime rates as a, uh, at the same time as the uh, broken windows theory was implemented, but they attribute the, the decline in crime to something other than broken windows. So they're very critical. They think very poorly of broken windows theory, particularly since broken windows theory, <coughs> with its focus on stopping the little crimes, and if you stop the little crimes, you're going to stop the big crimes. For instance, people that are arrested for very small crimes, we call them misdemeanors, in New York during the broken windows period, had up to 50% felons. In other words, serious criminals would commit small crimes. And so by arresting people for small crimes, you were getting serious criminals off the street. Very interesting. They also found that people that were arrested for serious crimes, the, the felonies, 75% of them, three quarters, three out of every four serious felons that were arrested had misdemeanor criminal records. They had already committed small crimes. So... By focusing on the little stuff, New York was successful in getting rid of the big. But they called that zero tolerance. And another thing that was hand in hand with zero tolerance was stop and frisk. Whenever the police would walk by me, if I went like this, they call that a furtive movement. Why is he looking away very quickly? They'd say, you, stop. And they would pat me down to see if I have a gun. Well, stop and frisk became part of broken windows theory that NPR and other critics, CNN and all the left-wing 
politicians in America, they hated that stuff because they thought that the police were interfering with the lives of decent human beings. When in fact, what they were doing is they were taking a quarter million guns off the street. By removing those guns from the street, well, those guns could not be used in the commission of crimes. Right? So focusing on small stuff, getting rid of guns, um, arresting people for stuff that would seem in the total spectrum of things to be pretty minor crimes like smoking pot and marijuana in public and uh, selling cigarettes on the street, right? We'll talk more about that because that led to a specific very famous case that brought about some riots and demonstrations and criminal activity. Well, the critics have something to say about broken windows. We talked a little bit in response to the critics um, uh, last month, but we'll look at the critics again as we start looking at the specific strategies that the police would use in New York to implement broken windows to be successful in their changing the quality of life for residents. Quality of life. Q, quality of, O, life, L. Q, O, L. So, after a while, broken windows um, theory uh, came to be known as quality of life policing. Because essentially, the police would go into a neighborhood and say, are you afraid to leave your house? Well, yeah, we're afraid because those people that are standing out on the street are always causing, causing trouble. So the police would get rid of those people out on the street. So the people that lived in the neighborhood would not be afraid to come outside. They increased the quality of life. And the quality of life threshold was different for every community. Some neighborhoods needed this much security. Others needed this much. Some needed less. Right? So neighborhoods didn't all look alike. They were all different. There would be a different level of tolerance of the community for the level of small-time crimes that were part of their neighborhood. So quality of life policing. All right, so look at those links. I'll highlight those ones, and I'll say, listen to this, the NPR article, uh, NPR um, presentation. It's about 30 minutes, 30 minutes long. And there's also an article, so you can read at the same time that you're listening. So I know it's in English, difficult for you to follow, but by getting both the, the spoken word as well as reading the words, you can get an idea of what the critics have to say about broken windows theory. And then uh, I do want you to focus on the article uh, written by the New York Police Department in response to the inspector general's um, criticism of their policing tactics. Okay, so that's, that's it for now. We'll pick up on that, um, the second half of class, and start getting into detail on the actual strategies. Actually, most of the strategies will cover after the midterm exam, which is in two weeks from today. I'll post it on CTL. It'll be online. Open book. You can talk to anybody. Use your notes. I'll be giving you a study guide next week. So one week from now, study guide. Two weeks from now, open book, midterm examination. All right, guys. I'll see you pretty soon. I'll see you in about two hours on Zoom class. It'll be very short. I'm just going to direct you to watch this video and then listen to the NPR and then read that article. And that'll do it for our first class this week. Hope you had a great weekend. I am so glad to see you. Talk to you later.